getting ready to shoot with my Tamron 300mm. It's a clunker. Have a look at the size of it. It's a classic. This Tamron 300mm 3.5. I think it's from the 70s or the 80s. Cost me like a hundred bucks. Not even. In American money, it's probably like $60. It was actually pretty ahead of its time. It was a lens that they invented to adapt to all other cameras. So they used to use these ad adapters. <laughs> they called it Adaptor. And I got the Olympus one, but that's really for the OM series. So I actually had to buy a micro four thirds adapter. Uh, 5.6, 300 millimeter prime manual. Obviously manual because I'm adapting it to micro four thirds. Anyway, let's go check it out. This is the Tamron 300mm f5.6 Prime from I think the 70s or the 80s so I bought this because it was cheap on eBay I noticed that it said it had an Olympus adapter and then I realized that um, this is one of the first adapt they call them adaptors one of the first lenses that you could put on multiple cameras uh, because of this lens mount thing and they made lenses for all different cameras and this one happened to be Olympus's one but it's really for the OM series so there's a little button there take it off depending on what camera you had for instance this one's OM mount I don't have an OM camera so I had to go and buy this here which is the I don't know what that says, photo, photo fix or some shit like that. I'll put it in the description. A micro four thirds adapter for the Tamron. So I'm assuming it's not just these old Tamrons. You could probably use any Tamron camera for micro four thirds. I don't know, but I just took a punt and it actually works. So that's the Tamron end and that's the micro four thirds circle there. And now, check this out. This looks like a sparrow. This looks like a sparrow sitting on top of an elephant. And there, and that's, that's clicked in. So, <laughs> it's kind of stupid having this on a small little micro four thirds. Maybe on the EM3 or the you know, EM2 or it might be it might be the right size but you know holding it like that it's so heavy you know it's not incredibly heavy that you can't handle it but you know compared to modern day lenses for the micro four thirds you know this is a, this is a clunker your aperture settings there uh, that ee i had a look i think it's something to do with shutter priority if you put it to that this is like on the original cameras if you set the shutter on the camera uh, and it would adjust the aperture so shutter priority really you know original shutter priority back in the day smooth focus very smooth actually really really good really good smooth focus it's got all the meters and the distances there if you want uh, this little thing on the side here, that's your lens mount. The lens mount is under here, so you can put a normal Swiss thing. Because putting it there, it's too top heavy, so the balance is really good there. And to get it right, you turn this thing here. And then you can position this wherever you want. Pops out the lens hood which is solid, really good. I mean, it's the 70s, man. They made things properly in the 70s. But I've been mucking around with it, and 
for what it's worth, you know, 80 bucks, it's pretty good. Now the beauty, you can get really far away and Jerry doesn't even know I'm here. I mean, she does know I'm here, but you know, you can get really good candid shots being so far away. Hey Jerry, take a photo. You can get right up close and get some nice uh, depth of field there. Jerry, what are you doing? You're scratching your ear. Are you scratching? <laughs> you cheeky. Alright, so uh, that's pretty far away. And I've got the focus peaking on. Yeah, that focus peaking really, really helps on old lenses like this. I'll use function button 3 there. If I'm now up, moves in there. You see all that? All that white. So that there is about as close to focused as you can get. And then you can either leave it on or take it off. When you're using manual focus, use that focus peaking thing. The problem with uh, a prime on a 300 is you can't bloody find anything. You're stuck at that one spot and you can't zoom back. And then when things are flying around, you know, you can't zoom out and catch it. it it's it's very hard. The, the Really, the only way is to pre-set pre, pre set the shot up and then wait, you know, until the birds land. These cockies, um, their feathers on the top of their head only, ray, only rise when they land, apparently. I've got a few good shots there. I don't know how good the focus is, but... Okay, those two there look awesome. Let's see if... Fortunately, the Olympus has uh, one of the best image stabilizations out there. At 300 millimeters, you know, it's practically impossible. I mean, I'm at 180th of a second just to get a low ISO, and you know, you really need that st stabilization. So let's see if what it can do to the moon. Let's focus to infinity now. Now there's two ways to do it. I can do it either in manual mode or in aperture priority. It doesn't really matter. Key to doing moon is to use the exposure compensation when you're in aperture priority. And in manual mode, you've got to pick a really high shutter speed, higher than what it, the camera thinks, and put it in spot metering. That's the best way to do it. Uh, always put ISO 200 uh, to get the best quality. Um, this thing doesn't talk to the camera, so you've got to set the aperture yourself. And, and there's a little ring there, so I put it at 5.6. So it's at 5.6, but you can move up one or two stops. Um, all you've got to do then is just uh, decrease the shutter speed. But it's the same thing. 5.6, 5, 5 there's no depth of field anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But playing around with the aperture you might find a sweet spot for this lens. The best thing for this is is for getting up close to stationary birds. Uh, trying to catch birds in flight with the manual focus. Forget about it. I mean I, I, I got some some shots of I got you know if you pre-focus but you know so I've been doing this and it's a perfect uh, balance if you turn that make it nice and uh, it's like I'm 
it's like I'm a sniper and then you know get down low and start shooting so let's go outside and practice yeah I need to raise this a bit yeah that's better and now I've got full access here Yeah, and now just wait. It's a bit too close, this. But there's a rock there. I'll put some seeds on there. And then just wait. I mean, the birds aren't coming. Here, come here. Jerry, you want to have a look? Hmm? You want to take a photo, Jerry? Eh? You come to help, Jerry. Have you come to help take a photo? You good girl. You have a look, Jerry. All right, Jerry. Out of the way. Yeah, it's really sharp, actually, from what I can see. I'll try and get some close-ups of Jerry. Apparently, this has got a really good close focusing range, so it's good for macros as well. Let's try that. There's someone's pigeons right here. It's got a ring, I think I saw it, it's got a ring on its foot, so that's someone's pigeon, he's lost, yeah that's about as close as I can get, that's about, yeah, I think it says on the thing there, 2.5, which is, what's that, I think that's 2.5 metres, or 8 foot, and I'm focused right at the end there, I can't get any closer focus. I've got the focus peaking on, but it doesn't always show. But with this lens, you can actually pretty much see where it's in focus anyway. It's really, really good. You can catch it straight away, so especially with a lot of light on there. I dropped down the aperture to f11 so I can get some more depth of field. But I think at 5.6 it was alright anyway, but you never know. If you've got this opportunity and it's, it presents itself, Try different apertures. Good day, mate. Brrr, brrr. <laughs> Gotta find out where the hell this bird came from. I think it will just fly back to its master. Or it might be lost, it could be who knows, it could be from miles away. These things. These are uh, homing pigeons, you know, once they get lost, I think the crows end up eating them. But I'll try and catch him. You don't catch the pigeon, Jerry. Don't catch the pigeon. No, Jerry. Jerry, catch the pigeon. <laughs> Jerry. No, she won't harm him. She's Jerry's all bark, no show. Hey, Jerry, you're a scaredy cat. You catch the pigeon? Catch the pigeon, catch the pigeon. It's an old lens. It's hit and miss, really. Uh, some of the shots turned out pretty sharp. Some of them are a little bit, you know, soft. The adapter was around 20 bucks and then the lens was around 80 bucks. So for what you're paying for, just to test out 300 millimeters without buying, you know, the 300 millimeter prime from Olympus, you know, which is like, two thousand dollars or something you know all that thirteen thousand dollar what is it 100 to 150 to 400 whatever that 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 latest one that came out i mean obviously it's chalk and cheese but if you, if you want to just get and see what what 300 millimeters gets you because remember it's 600 millimeters really in the in the full frame equivalent i don't mind i thought it was pretty cool uh i want to do it so i can photograph birds um when they're still you know, because shooting them while they're in motion, without that autofocus feature, you really have to pre-focus, and, and even then, um, you know, the light factor, that's where it kills you. At 5.6, and then I think you've got to use the conversion, because it's going to micro four thirds. I don't know how that works. I think there's a video by Tony Norfrock, uh, explains all that crap about, converting 
the aperture, what, what the real aperture is. I, I probably shouldn't have got a 300 millimeter as my very first adapted lens. I think maybe I should have started with something, you know, like uh, 35 millimeter or something, you know, adapted lenses or that, that uh, nifty 50 from Olympus. I think it's the 1.850 millimeters from Olympus, the OM one, the old one. Adapt that first. It's actually quite fun bringing things far away in. You know, it opens up a whole new world, especially with like say the moon and um, and bird photography or or wildlife photography. You know, wildlife you got to be far away. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. There's those pterodactyls again. And oh, I get that one, Josh. But your shutter speed, what's your shutter speed say? Now, look in the look in the eye finder 1250 to 1250, 1 over 250, uh, 1250. So that might be too slow to stop the bird in flight. So, what you got to do, Josh, is look in, look in it again, is uh, move the front dot. Uh, is it the front dial or the front dial? No, the back dial. No, no, that's your zoom. Y your left hand, this yeah. hand here. Oh, my right hand. You yeah. see this back dial? Yeah.